So here are some of the threats you should be aware of when using the internet. Viruses, worm, trojan, spyware, adware. These are all parts of the class of software called malware. Stands for malicious software. Virus is a malicious program designed to replicate itself and transfers one computer to another, either through the internet and local networks or data storage like flash drives and CDs. Worm is a malicious program that transfers from one computer to another by any type of means. Often, it uses a computer network to spread itself. Trojan is a malicious program that is disguised as a useful program but once downloaded or installed, leaves your PC unprotected and allows hackers to get your information. Spyware is a program that runs in the background without you knowing it, thus called spy. It has the ability to monitor what you are currently doing and typing through key logging. We have these key loggers used to record the keystroke done by the users. This is done to steal their password or any sensitive information. It can record email, messages, or any information you type using your keyboard. The last one we have here is Adware. It is a program designed to send you advertisements, mostly as pop-ups. So again, virus, worm, trojan, spyware, and adware are all parts of the class of software called malware. Next, we have here spam or the unwanted email mostly from bots or advertisers. It can be used to send malware. Now, the last internet chat we have here is phishing. Its goal is to acquire sensitive personal information like passwords and credit card details. This is done by sending you an email that will direct the user to visit a website and be asked to update his or her username, password, credit card, or personal information. We also have your farming or a more complicated way of phishing where it exploits the DNS or the domain name service system. Now let's move on with the protecting reputations online. In the past, doing something embarrassing was not much of a big deal. It happened, people would laugh at it, and they would move on. Nowadays, embarrassing moments are captured using any device you could imagine. What is forced is that people can easily upload it to the internet, or it can be stored forever. This could impact not only your reputation, but also the people around you. What is forced is that people tend to ignore this fact and suffer from it later in their life. Once you post something over the internet, search engines keep them in their archives for search results. This makes anything you post to last forever even if you delete it in your page. Something you and your friends find funny today may be something that could harm someone's reputation later. Now, here are the things you might want to consider before posting something over the internet. So before you post something on the web, ask these questions to yourself. Would you want your parents or grandparents to see it? Would you want your future boss to see it? Once you post something on the web, you have no control of who sees your post. Your friends depend on you to protect their reputation online. Talk to your friends about this serious responsibility. Set your post to private. In this way, search engines will not be able to scan that post. 
if you feel that a post can affect you or others reputation ask the one who posted it to pull it down or report it as inappropriate now let's talk about copyright infringement if you create something an idea an invention a form of literary work or a research you have the right as to how it should be used by others this is called intellectual property in other words the copyright law includes your rights over your work, and anyone who uses it without your consent is punishable by law. Try grabbing any book, then browse it first few pages, and you will find a page with a disclaimer with the words, No part of this book may be copied, reproduced. That is a copyright page. Consider that not everything out there is good for you. Just like your own. Contents received from websites have their respective copyright. There are several instances where employees or business owners face copyright infringement and are sentenced to a huge fine due to reckless copying of materials. Here are some tips that could help you to avoid copyright infringement. First, you have to understand, be responsible, be creative, and know the law. The information that we need is now more like already. It is just a matter of how to look for it and how to use information from the most credible source. Here are some tips in conducting online research. In conducting an online research, you must have a question in mind. Focus on a question you want answered. If it is a series of questions, start with one. Never search everything on one. Go. Next, you have to narrow it down. Search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo use several filters to determine the most appropriate result for you. These search engines use your previous search history and your geographical location and send you the result which is the most related to you. Try to search weather, and most search engines will determine the weather conditions of where you are. But if all of these filters fail, you should remember to narrow down what you are searching for. For example, you were to look for Tom Sawyer. The animation series, you would better use the keywords Tom Sawyer animation rather than just Tom Sawyer. Another example is if you were to look for science research environments, it would be better to include what branch of science it is or what type of study it is. Next tip we have here is advanced search. Okay, so the best way to build our information we get from search engines is by using the advanced search. This will allow you to filter out information you do not need. In Google, simply search a word like you would normally do. Then click the advanced search option on the options menu located at the upper right corner of the page. Once you are done, you can now filter your search results. Next tip we have here, look for credit source. Some wikis, though filled with updated information, are not a credible source. This is due to the fact that anyone can edit its content. When using wikis, check out the link of the cited text indicated by superscript number to be navigated to the footnote where the list of sources is located. Click the source of the information and see if it is credible.
credible sources are scientific journals, established news and magazines, websites, online encyclopedias, and scholarly videos. You can also check the URL of a website. It ends with a dot or dot go and dot edu. The website that ends with dot com is intended to be a commercial website and maybe slanted to promoting a product or service. You should consider the intent of the information on the web page. In most cases, that edu websites are best for search as government and organization websites. They have a tendency to make information favorable for them. Of course, you have to give credit. If you're going to use the information from a source for educational purposes, give credit to the original author of the page or information. To properly cite the reference, you may use the following format. 